welcome back to the Dead Drop Podcast with John F. Mers. I am, of course, John F. Mers. And uh, right before we started here, I took a swig of water and promptly got water spots all over my t-shirt. So, kicking things off on just a great note. Uh, it has been a while since we talked last. December 2019 was my last installment of this podcast. I cannot believe it's been, you know, the better part of nine months already. Um, but obviously, as you know, we're in the midst of a global pandemic. And with that said, let's get a couple of things out of the way, first and foremost. That way, um, some of you may want to just completely turn this off right now, and that's completely and totally fine. If you are somebody that thinks that COVID-19 is a, some sort of mass hysteria conspiracy, or if you are somebody who thinks that being asked to wear a mask for the betterment of humanity is somehow an infringement on your rights, well, I'm here to tell you that you're full of shit. So, um, I have lost several people close to me to COVID-19, and I have no tolerance for idiots who think that being asked to wear a mask is a horrible thing. I also have no tolerance for idiots who think that this is some type of global conspiracy or some other ridiculous bullshit. So, if you are one of those people... Do yourself a favor and turn this off now because you're probably not going to like anything else that I have to say. And I'm totally cool with that. Uh, I'm pretty much done catering to people who just are enraptured by stupid things on a daily basis. And there are plenty of people, unfortunately, in this country right now that are doing that. So if you're one of those people, no offense, no harm taken. I am not the author for you. For everybody else, I'm assuming that you are here first and foremost because of my writing. If you have come here because of my acting, that's really cool. Welcome. (laughs) I am not that well known yet, so uh, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that most of you are probably here to catch up with me on my writing. And since it's been such a long time since uh, we spoke last, and, and this is actually the first televised episode of the Dead Drop podcast... I thought it would uh, it would be a good opportunity to get you guys all caught up on what I have been doing. Um, so when this when this pandemic started, you know, I'd be lying if I said that it was any any great struggle for me. I mean, by and large, I work out of the house as it is, and uh, you know, I have my office here in the house. Uh, this is my office, by the way. I threw a, a new coat of paint on the back wall here because it makes a better backdrop for some of the self auditions that I do for my acting. And, uh, yeah, it just looks, it looks pretty good because, uh, we'll get into some other stuff later, but having, having the backdrop painted that color, uh, definitely helps out on a number of fronts. So when the pandemic hit, yeah, I, uh, I was sitting on the couch and I started drawing up a whole list of projects that I wanted to get to. I I sort of resolved to, I wanted to come out of this pandemic, let's put it this way. I wanted to come out of this pandemic having produced a lot of stuff. And I wanted to come out of this pandemic having tackled some projects that have been on the back burner for any number of years. And I am happy to say... (laughs) that I have done just that. Since uh, we went into lockdown, when was that, around mid-March, something like that? Um, I've written close to, well, just over about a half a million words. So, without further ado, let us discuss what I have been up to. These are in no particular order because, quite frankly, I can't remember which one I wrote first. So, there you go. These are all in first draft mode, by the way. They still have to be edited, so there is some time before these are going to come out. Some of these, I do have new releases to talk about as well, but let's just get to the first drafts of what I have been working on. All right, so first up in the list here, Temple of Demons. This is the long-awaited third, yes, third installment of my Shadow Warrior series with uh, Ron. Uh, that is uh, done, and it was a hefty, hefty manuscript. That alone was, I believe, 105,000 words. So I have to get that edited through second, third drafts, all that good stuff. Um, but I was super stoked to get that done because that has been 
it's been uh, been in the pipeline for a while so um it was uh, it was good visiting with ron again and uh cassandra and uh so yeah so that is well it'll be coming out one way or another i have to check with bane and see if they want to publish it or i'll bring it out independently it doesn't really matter but that is done so that will sort of uh I don't know where we're going to go after that, quite frankly, because the way the book ends, it could go either way. I could stop it there, or I could maybe do other adventures down the line. Um, I was contracted originally for three books, uh, so this is uh, this has definitely been a necessary project to get done, and it is done, and I'm super happy about it. So, oh, yes. Okay, so, for years, literally years, I have been talking about the possibility of spinning Talia off into her own book series. And it got detailed to the point where I sketched out the first three books. I am happy to report that Codename Belladonna, the first Talia novel, and it's a shorter novel, I'm not going to lie, it's not like this full-blown, you know, 85,000 word novel. Um, it is a shorter novel, but it is a novel nonetheless. That is also complete. So um, that was really fun. I had, a, I had a really good time writing Talia uh, in her own book series. It, it really gave me a chance to sort of uh, spread my wings and explore who Talia is as a person. So I'm totally, totally psyched to, to get that done as well. Um, so I think that will probably be out you know, sooner than later, I'd like to get it out by the end of the year. Um, I'd be I'd be happy with that. But uh, just just getting that done and, and getting, you know, another backburnered project, just from idea stage into actual first draft stage, it was great. I was I was just I was so thrilled, so thrilled to finish that up. Um, so yeah, so I'll be I'll be looking forward to getting that one out. And then, oh yes, um, another <laughs> backburner project is also done, and this one is called Raider X. This is a World War II thriller series, and basically uh, the main character, uh, how, should I, how should I phrase it? He is moments away from being executed by a firing squad, when he is given the chance to go on a suicide mission for the British Crown, and he does just that. So Raider X uh, is all about his mission to destroy a brand new commerce raider that the Germans have put to sea, and the adventure that ensues therein. And it's, um, well, I mean, if you've been reading me for any number of years, you know how, how these things go. John starts off with the best of intentions to write a straight thriller, and then somewhere along the way, something else happens. So, without giving too much away, maybe somewhere along the way in this book, something else happens. We'll see. But again, this is something that I've had on the back burner for years, and the first draft is done in this book as well. So, totally stoked about that. Uh, Bolt of Blue a, is a new Frank Steele job that, uh, this will be number three in the, uh, Frank Steele jobs series. So once again, we are back in Boston. Well, we start in Boston. We end up, uh, off the coast of Martha's Vineyard, um, down in Nantucket Sound for a little bit of a, uh, let's say Nazi artifact hunting mission. So that's... That's all I'll say on that. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, additionally, I have written a short story called A Favor for the Dead. And this one was spurred by, uh, of all things, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, a good buddy of mine, Mike Morano, who is a, a fantastic writer in his own right, as well as an uh, exceptional teacher of writing invited me to uh, play on a couple of Zoom installments of Dungeons & Dragons. And I gotta be honest, it's been like 35 years since I played Dungeons & Dragons, and I, I jumped at the chance to do it. And I had an absolute frickin' blast doing it because, again, it's been so long. 
So, uh, as a result of just profound enjoyment playing Dungeons and Dragons again for the first time in 35 years, I, uh, I enjoyed the character that I made to the point where I said, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna write some short stories about this guy because I think he's pretty cool. And uh, Mike, who was the dungeon master for that particular campaign, had given me some other background on my character, and I just kind of took it and ran with it. So, yeah, so I've got a, a short story about that as well, so that'll be coming out. Um, what is available right now, and there are a number of things, um, first and foremost, revisiting Lawson, uh, Ghost Work is out that came out I want to say right around the start of 2020 um, uh, yeah Lawson is in Sarajevo and he's got to uh, basically ghost a security team that's providing protection for a new vampire governor who is making the rounds and of course shit happens <laughs> as it often does with Lawson and he's got to uh, respond in kind to that so that is out right now uh, in both ebook and print. What else do we have out? We have The Specialist, a, another uh, Lawson... What is that? Short story or a mission? Ghost work is a mission. The Specialist, I want to say it's a short story. Um, that is out as well. And then, when the lockdown happened, the first thing I did before I wrote anything else was I wrote a Lawson short story called A Deadly Silence. Because I thought it would be really fun to plunge everybody's favorite vampire fixer into a case in the middle of a pandemic in Boston. So that's what I did. Uh, so A Deadly Silence is also available. So yeah, so that's like three new Lost and Adventures that you can get your hands on right now like going out to Amazon. And uh, oh, additionally, there's two other new releases that are out. The Ninja Apprentice number three. Hand of the Yakuza is available as well in ebook form. That came out, um, much to uh, happiness of some of the folks who have been writing me demanding a new Ninja Press book. So I finally got that one out the door. Uh, and Deathmaster number two, A Dark in Celebration, uh, is the title of that. That is out in print and ebook also. And uh, this time, the Deathmaster goes to Toronto to investigate the murder of a friend of his and winds up getting involved in the incel movement. And if you know anything about incels, if you don't, they're basically uh, these folks that, uh, well, they're misogynistic assholes, quite frankly, um, who think that it's a women's duty to provide sex to them you know, basically by any means necessary. Uh, if you know anything about me, you know that that has <laughs> no chance of flying with me, and so I took advantage of the fact to write a novel about it. And, uh, hey Desmond, my cat just walked in. Uh, so yeah, so Deathmaster number two, A Dark in Celebration, is also available now on Amazon. And I think the last thing to talk about in terms of writing, because you know, Dead Drop, we go through writing, we go through acting, we go through producing, so we'll definitely be getting into those too. But since it's been so long, and since most of you are probably here from my writing, I figured we'd kick it off with that first. So here we are. Uh, audiobooks. Audiobooks. So Joe Hempel, some of you may know, did the audio narration on... Um, which ones? He did the Invoker, the Destructor, and the Syndicate. So Joe has started a brand new imprint called Fireside Horror, and I am absolutely thrilled to announce that he will be doing the audiobooks for my Blood Armageddon series, which is Last Vampire, Sands of Omega, and a yet untitled third book, which will be coming out soon, as soon as I figure out what the hell it's all about. <laughs> so, those books will be coming out in audio as well. And needless to say, he did uh, he did such a great job that I'm really thrilled to be partnering with him on this. And I know he's going to do a kick-ass job on these books as well. Um, so yeah, so if you didn't know, the first four Lawson books are available as audio books. Uh, and you can get them anywhere audio books are sold on Amazon through Audible 
what have you. So make sure you pick those up. Um, from what I can tell, not too many people have, so I don't know if uh, that's just a question of not knowing that they were available or maybe folks just really aren't into audiobooks. I don't know. Um, drop me a line, let me know, and uh, I'll see if I can, I don't know, improve things or, you know, at least keep it moving along and, and along those lines. But, uh, but yeah, so that is it for the, uh, for the writing thing, and uh, we're going to take a quick break, and I will be back in just a moment, and we'll continue on. Welcome back. <laughs> in the uh, quick break that we just took, I made myself a sapphire and tonic, so if you are also imbibing, cheers. Oh, that's tasty. <clears throat> okay, so moving on, acting. Well, let's see. The last thing I did in 2019, I think we talked about already. I don't know what that was. Uh, the last thing I did in 2019 was I played a pastor, of all things, if you can believe that, um, for a TV series on the Smithsonian Channel called America's Hidden Mysteries, something like that. Anyway. Uh, the episode was entitled Vampires in America. I mean, again, <laughs> gotta love it, right? Um, but, uh, yeah, so I play a pastor in that. That has not come out yet, probably because that was episode three of their new season that they were filming when I was in it. And uh, then, of course, you know, right after the holidays, we had the pandemic thing. So I don't know if they were able to get done all the production on season two or not, but... When it comes out, excuse me, I will let you know, and you can watch accordingly. A funny thing about that was, and again, sorry if this is retreading familiar ground in episode 19. I can't remember because I haven't listened to episode 19 and since I put it out. Um, when I showed up on set for that, they were like, okay, so here's the deal. You're going to be sitting at a desk. You're going to be writing a letter. And uh, we're just going to be kind of over your shoulder. We're going to have some wide shots. We're going to be over your shoulder. We're going to see, you know, what you're writing. And I was like, all right, yeah, it's great. No problem. And then they said, uh, have you, you know, how's your cursive? Is it pretty good? And I said, well, you know, I haven't really written in cursive in decades. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's probably passable. And they said, okay, great, great. Um, we're going to give you a, a quill feather to write with. And then there'll be an ink bottle that you can, you know, occasionally dip the uh, the feather into and, and continue writing. And I, I said, excuse me? A quill feather? Which I have never, ever written with in my entire life. And they said, ah, oh, don't worry about it. We've got a couple of sheets of paper over here. You can practice real quick. And uh, we're sure it'll be fine. Um, yeah. Like, I don't know what they're going to have to do in post-production to make it look even remotely decent, but uh, let's just say they got their work cut out for them because my writing with the quill feather was horrible. I mean, just atrocious. And my handwriting is terrible anyway, but using a quill feather is A, not easy, and B, um, messy. Uh, considering that you have to constantly dip and there's excess ink in this letter and there's not in another. And clearly, by the time I was finished, it looked like somebody had basically been murdered over the course of the entire paper and there was ink everywhere and it was just a complete total mess. But anyway, we'll see what they do with it. Um, going into 2020, however, I did do... Uh, I wouldn't really call it acting, per se. Uh, we did a, a thing for Staples... That was uh, part of their new, what are they calling it, Staples Connect. So they have um, office space that you can basically rent, you know, by the hour, um, podcasting equipment, stuff like that. So did a nice big shoot for them. That was two or three days, I think, on set for that. So, yeah, so that was a lot of fun. Some of the photos have started to come out online. If you're connected with me on Facebook, I've posted a bunch of them. Um, or on my Instagram, you might see them out there as well. And then I did, um, I did nothing for a while because right after that staple shoot, literally everything closed down because of the pandemic and, um, it was dead. It was a dead zone. And while that was, while everything was shut down, everybody was <clears throat> sort of scrambling to figure out how 
they were going to deal with the post-pandemic world of acting and modeling. So my agency um, came up with sort of a, a list of safety protocols that, that we were going to have in place any time that we, uh, the models, the actors, went out on set. Uh, they wanted us to be sure that the safety protocols are being followed. And then, of course, you know, Hollywood followed suit and came out with a whole bunch of things that, you know, masks and social distancing and depending on where you are on the crew, where, you know, how close you could be to other people, how close you could be to the production, the set itself. So that was a whole process in and of itself. The first thing that I did, I've done two things um, in August. So the first thing I did was, coincidentally enough, a promo for a safety products company that uh, basically filmed on probably the hottest day of the summer in a warehouse that had not high ceilings uh, and no ventilation. And I was geared up uh, with multiple layers on and boots that were two sizes too small for my poor size 12 feet uh, and a mask and a face shield and the whole nine yards and it, it brought back memories. Uh, if you've ever served, if you served when I served, it was called mop gear and uh, it was, it wasn't, uh, wearing the mop gear was obviously worse than, than the safety protocol gear, but it, it definitely brought me back to, you know, the early 90s and having to wear the uh, chemical, biological and nuclear suits that we had to get into for six hours at a time and hook our canteen up to a straw thing and, you know, be basically be rehydrated every half hour or so to keep from passing out in these suits. Look it up. Get, go to Google Images and look up Mop Gear, M-O-P-P, -P, and uh, that'll give you an idea as to what it was like back back when I was in the service. But uh, yeah, so that was uh, the safety thing that I did for the corporation that obviously hasn't come out yet. Basically, I think what it was was a, was a video for the company itself, so I don't know if, if it's ever going to see the light of day. Um, for their employees as they started to come back to work, it was going to be a sort of a video that they showed everybody and said, listen, this is, this is how everything has to be. You know, you have to sanitize the work area and this, that, and the other thing. But it, it was for a great, great studio that I like working with a whole lot. And, uh, so that was fun. That was the first, the first job sort of coming out of the lockdown. And I was happy to see that everybody on set was appropriately masked and, Safety protocols are being, uh, you know, observed and, and so forth and so on. And then, uh, all right, so last week, <laughs> I, I, and let me just, as an aside here, say one of the things that I love about being involved in acting and, and modeling is, is the fact that I get to have these really cool experiences, and I love, I love chasing new experiences. I think that's what one of the... One of the things that life is all about is about trying to have as many different varied experiences as you can while you're here so that you appreciate your time on earth before you move on. And uh, last week was, was a, a chance to, to do that. I, uh, I was cast as a, as a principal role in a reenactment that will be shown in a museum in Texas called November 1963, and it's a reenactment of the Kennedy assassination. And uh, I, my character doesn't have a name. Basically, they call them third floor hallway officer, but I call a man with a rifle because that's what it was. I'm, I'm the guy holding in the, in, if you ever looked at any of the pictures, I'm the guy holding the rifle, Lee Harvey Oswald's rifle overhead as we marched down the corridor. So this was a whole reenactment thing that we were doing last week. And, uh, well, this area is starting to thin a little bit. Um, I look nothing like <laughs> the guy in the photograph who is, you know, pretty much bald the entire way through and, uh, has the, has the ring of hair around on the outside, wears glasses, you know, had a bow tie on the whole nine yards. So needless to say, when I was cast for this thing, I thought it was pretty funny because they told me who I was going to be playing. Um, I finally found out when I arrived at the fitting, which was the week before the actual shoot. And there's, you know, a big picture on the wall that the costume designer has. And I said, that's me. 
And she said, yep, that, that's, that's who they want you to play. And I went, okay, that's going to be interesting because I don't look anything like this guy. So, excuse me, my agent reached out to me and said, listen, they're going to have to fit you for a bald cap. And uh, I said, well, that's cool. That, that sounds like funny. You don't have a problem with that? I said, no, I've never, never had it done before. Um, and I have tremendous respect for awesome hair and makeup artists. You know, the, the, the work that they do is just unbelievable. Um, so the day of the shoot came and it was last Wednesday and I had to, I had a call time of seven o'clock to be on set. And, uh, basically as soon as I arrived, they got me into the chair because my makeup took two hours to apply. And, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to cut in, in the video. And this is the benefit of actually watching this on YouTube as opposed to listening to it. I apologize. I can't show you what I look like when you're listening to this podcast. But if you get a chance, go out to YouTube forward slash pound cake media and look up the dead drop podcast and you will be able to see the process that I went through. And I've got kind of some crappy pictures that I just kind of shot with my phone when I was sitting in the chair of the various steps involved to be fitted for the ball cap and then the makeup that went in. And, um, the, uh, the before and the after are, are pretty compelling if not completely horrifying, because I look nothing like how I look sitting here talking to you all at this point. So, uh, needless to say, I had a blast. I thought it was, I thought it was great. You know, the the uh, the gentleman Joe Rossi, the uh, the makeup guy that was in charge of uh, of getting me all all made up, did just an absolutely phenomenal job. He's an awesome dude, um, and uh, I couldn't I couldn't believe. The, the transformation. It was wild. And again, you know, this is what I love. It's a brand new experience. I'd never had that done before. I mean, I, I didn't really have much done to me aside from making me look older for the cars that made America. So when, uh, when I found out that I, I had the chance to actually be bald, uh, I jumped at it because why not? You know, it's a, it's a, it's a great new experience and, uh, seeing what people can do to make you not look like yourself is is pretty wild stuff. So, uh, like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys right now after this, the uh, the process that I went through, um, and I'll uh, and we'll just go from there. So, uh, hang on, let me uh, let me get that queued up. All right, so I have uh, I have my phone here because I took some pictures of the entire transformation. I'm just gonna talk. <clears throat> excuse me, real quick, and this will probably be. A soundtrack while I'm actually showing the pictures on screen, but for those of you who are listening, I'll just kind of talk through it real quick. So, first thing they did was um, they fit me for a uh, for a bald cap, which comes in like this foil pouch, and then you kind of have to cut around the edges of the ears and down around the back of your head and stuff like that, and then he kind of sticks it on your head, smooths down your hair, and all that good stuff. He gets um, spirit gum. And he applies it both to your skin and the underside of the mask itself because I guess it's a contact adhesive. And then he, you know, press it down and just kind of work on fitting and smoothing out the wrinkles and all that other good stuff. And then what he did was he applied a layer of sort of this reddish makeup all over the bald cap, which I guess was sort of the, the foundational makeup that was going to help it blend into my actual skin tone a little bit better. So, and then after the red makeup, then the more skin color appropriate makeup went on. And that's when the real blending started. And that's, that's when it got really wild because it actually looked like my own skin. And, um, yeah, I was completely bald at that point. And I was just, <laughs> I was just sort of sitting there going, wow, I haven't, I haven't been this way since I had all my hair taken off in the service. Um, but fortunately I don't appear to have like this weirdly misshapen skull. So if I do end up uh, losing all of my hair at some point or losing enough of it that I just say, the hell with it, I'm just going to shave it all off. I'm not going to look too, too horrible. Although I would love to keep this. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Um, so yeah, so that was, that was the funny point for that. And uh, we went through a couple of, of other pictures here where it's just, he's refining making sure that there are no lines showing between the ball cap and my skin and just perfecting the skin tone. And you'll, and you'll see those in a second. 
And then we started uh, putting the, the ring of, of hair around, uh, around the sort of the lower part of my head, which was, uh, as soon as that went on, it just changed the look entirely. <laughs> you know, you can be bald and still be pretty badass looking. There's enough people walking around who are bald and badass, but as soon as he put this hair on, <clears throat> excuse me, it changed just everything, the entire vibe. And it really, well, the interesting thing was, it allowed me to get into character a little bit more. So that was that was pretty funny. And then uh, yeah, it was kind of longish in the back too, which was which was kind of funny. And then he put a little bit like way back on top of my head. And uh, those were just a few just piecemeal strands, you know, decorated on that. And uh put the glasses on, put the outfit on that I had picked out with the bow tie and I'm not going to say that, that I look exactly like the guy with the rifle in the picture, but I look a lot more like him than I did John Mertz. Let's put it that way. And that, that was, that was astonishing enough for me that the fact that, uh, that Joe, the makeup guy was, was able to, to basically transform me into this dude. It was, uh, it was something else. Hmm. Well, that's a good drink. So. That is it on the acting front. Um, I had a cool audition last week for a feature film that I hope I get. Uh, can't say anything about that because that's just the way it goes. But uh, auditions, that's, I think that's the biggest thing. Let, let me close out with this because I, I forgot to talk about this. During the pandemic, while it was going on, all of the auditions changed to at-home auditions. So that was another reason why I, I painted the, uh, the backdrop here wall here because it just makes a better backdrop than the than the big cloth thing that I had before that looks like crap so um excuse me so that happened so there were a lot of at-home auditions when things you know probably around June or July started to pop off again as people started saying okay we've got these safety protocols in place and we can you know we can actually do productions if we take our time and adhere to these safety protocols so when that happened a flood of stuff came out and it was, you know, self tape for this, self tape for that. And you just, you video yourself, you set your, uh, your iPhone up and video it and then send it off. And, and that's, that's how it's been. So, um, needless to say, that's pretty convenient for me. I don't have to drive anywhere. I don't have to go anywhere. I've got this, uh, new mic set up here and uh, I got the wall and the cameras and, and we're good to go. So I don't mind the whole at-home audition thing. I actually think it's pretty, pretty cool. So that has been going on as well. And that's, uh, that's going to close it out. So I'm waiting to hear back on the feature film roll. We'll see, we'll see where it goes from there. So I got uh, one more area to talk about and that's coming up next. Sorry, you caught me in my drink. All right, producing. What's going on producing? Well, obviously, not much. Um, pound cake is still rolling around. Rolling along, I should say. Uh, Chris and I have been putting a lot of stuff into uh, pre-motion, let's put it that way. Um, Jamie is working on getting a bunch of stuff going down on his end. And Chris and I are sort of working on the executive not executive, executive is the wrong word, but <clears throat> since New Ronan is, is here and is sort of sort of the uh, the holding body for all the intellectual properties, Pound Cake is sort of the executing wing of that where we figure out how to actually get stuff made and go and, and go and do it. So Chris and I have been working a lot on that front. The biggest thing that we've been working on is our YouTube channel, and I hope everybody listening to this or watching this goes and subscribes to our YouTube channel. It is youtube.com forward slash pound cake media, all one word. Um, subscribe, hit the notification bell. We got a bunch of stuff that we're working on. We've put up a bunch of teasers, a bunch of trailers. Um, I started filming this uh, pound cake survival tips, which is a little silly comedy series that I make with my youngest son, Will. Um, I sort of drafted him for it. I'm not going to lie, uh, but the, but his deadpan approach, I think, makes the whole thing. Like people aren't watching for me, which is good. They're watching for him because he's hysterical. So, uh, so you can check that out. 
And then the, the big thing that Chris and I are working on right now is Cocktails and Screams, which is our brand new podcast. We are six episodes in, and every week we watch a horror movie beforehand. And then uh, when we roll the camera on the podcast, we talk about the movie and we imbibe tasty cocktails. Usually the cocktail is directly related to the movie at hand. Um, so last week we did the fourth kind and the cocktail was called, uh, the alien abduction and it was a delicious, although a little too sweet. I'm not going to lie. It was pretty sweet. It was Midori melon liqueur, um, coconut rum and, uh, pineapple juice. So while it was very tasty, it was very sweet. Um, but yeah, so we do that uh, every week. We have a new episode of Cocktails and Screams. And if you prefer to watch it, you can do that on the YouTube channel. If you prefer to listen, you can get it wherever podcasts are served up. So that's, uh, that's one thing. The second thing that we do is after we finish the episode of Cocktails and Screams, we get a fresh drink, um, or two, or three, depending. And we go and re we record After Hours. And After Hours is, well, let me put it this way. Cocktails and Screams has a very loose format. And by loose, I mean like really loose, like <laughs> super loose. Like we, we have an intro, we talk about the drink, and then we just get into it about the movie. After Hours is even more freewheeling than that. We turn the lights down, we get, uh, we get another drink or two or three, and we talk about anything and everything under the sun. Um, let's see. What have we talked about so far? We talked about uh, a murder case that hit a little bit home, too close to home for Chris's brother. We talked about uh, really bad writing gigs that I've had. And um, the writing gig that I did with a mixed martial art superstar that did not turn out the way I thought it was going to turn out. We talked about sleep paralysis and alien abduction. Uh, we talked about more alien abduction and I can't remember what we talked about after alien abduction this most recent time because both Chris and I had had a number of drinks at that point and I'm not sure where we went. Um, and the new episode for After Hours hasn't come out yet so I actually haven't seen it. I have to edit the footage and get it over to Chris to, uh, to do the post-production on before that comes out. So we have, and then Chris, oh yeah, and then Chris is doing a new podcast called Are You Awake, which takes place after, after hours. I don't know how he does it, because at the end of after hours, I'm ready for bed. Chris apparently is amazing and can keep going for another hour or so. So he started this new podcast called Are You Awake with Christopher Grace, where he is going to be calling some random person that he knows uh every week and asking the very basic question are you awake and if so let's have a conversation so yeah if uh if you're interested in in you know three or four podcasts that uh that are pretty wild and varied then by all means check them all out they're all out there on uh, on our youtube channel youtube.com forward slash pound cake media and uh, we can yeah, go from there. I mean, that's, that's pretty much where it's at right now. We've been really focused on the YouTube thing. We've been really focused on the podcast thing. Um, it's our way of saying, look, we can't mount a theatrical production right now because of the pandemic, but we can put out content in another way, and this is the way we're going to do it. So we're going to record podcasts, we're going to videotape the podcasts, and we're just going to make a lot of content that people – you know, can swing by the channel and consume at their leisure. And uh, it makes us makes us feel better about things because we're producing, we're filming, we're, we're refining things. And uh, it's a good time. We're having, we're having a blast doing it. And uh, I told Chris, I said, I want to I resurrect, I want to bring back Dead Drop, and I want to put it on our Pound Cake channel. And he was like, yeah, that's great. He made, he made the amazing intro to this that you watched. And the graphics for it, he's he's just incredible, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep going with it for as long as possible. There's gonna be a lot of stuff coming in future months. We have a bunch of stuff 
worked out. We have a great series that we are planning to launch pretty soon called Dogs of War, which is uh, it's a micro content series. So it's very, um, each episode is only about five to 10 minutes. And there's uh, five episodes in season one. I'm really excited about it. It's a, it's a kind of a passion project of mine and the actors that we have involved in it are incredible. Um, so I can't wait to get that out to everybody. And beyond that, we've got, uh, we've got a couple of horror projects that we are very, very interested in getting out. So those are going to be coming out as well. But the best way to, uh, to support us, if you're interested in doing so, I mean, beyond being here for my writing, this is, a, this is another aspect of my life that's near and dear to my heart. So uh, I sincerely appreciate any and all support. You know, if you, if you like the podcasts, whether it's this one, whether it's Cocktails and Screams, whether it's After Hours, whether it's Are You Awake, um, please share them. Please, subs- please be sure to subscribe. We need all the subscription on YouTube that we can get. Um, we need all the watch time we can get on YouTube. So if you're listening to this, on Anchor or Spotify or iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts, please also go out and watch the podcasts on YouTube because, you know, even just watching them for, you know, 15, 20 minutes helps us out tremendously. Uh, We'd like to get to the point where we can monetize the channel and, um, you know, maybe pay for the drinks that we ingest on cocktails and screams and after hours. So uh, any and all help is dearly appreciated. And you can always support these podcasts as well. Uh, If you go out to Anchor and uh, you'll see uh, support this podcast and you can can help us out that way as well. That is about it from here. This went a little bit longer, quite frankly, than I thought it was going to go. I thought this was going to be a pretty quick episode. But uh, it's been so long since we talked last. I'm super stoked to be talking to you guys again. Um, I hope you're all doing well. It is, it's crazy times right now. There's just no other way to put it. Uh, we have a really important election coming up and I hope everybody that's listening and watching is registered to vote, get out, exercise that right. You know, don't let anybody stop you. Don't let anybody harass you about it. This is a, this is a fundamental right that we have for those of you who are American citizens. This is a, this is a sacred right. You know, when I, when I think about you know, why I served and and what I served for, this is it. This is it right here. You know, the the opportunity and the duty that we have to all cast a vote as an American citizen. Super important. Super important. And if you're not an American and you're listening from around the world, first of all, hello. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. Uh, And vote in your own elections as well, because uh, in a free democratic society, that's a pretty cherished thing to be able to do. But uh, that's it from here. I will see you guys next week on Dead Drop. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome back. And uh, I hope to hear from you. Anybody has any questions, concerns, comments, demands for equal time, that sort of thing, drop me a line, johnfmers at gmail.com. I will answer it on the podcast. You know, Um, always interested in hearing from you folks. I love my readers. I love my fans. You guys are the best. Thank you for sticking with me. I appreciate it. Go out, buy some of my new books, tell me what you think of them. I hope you enjoy them. And I've got a ton more stuff coming at you very soon. All right? Y'all have a great night. Thank you. Bye.